In this video, we're going to go over how to create a booking page. Booking pages are the means of accepting appointments. To create a booking page, go to Setup and click on the plus icon in the Booking Page pane. In the pop-up, first define the booking page's public name. This will be your booking page's title and will be visible to your customers. This will also be the booking page's label within your Schedule Once account, unless you define otherwise. Next, create your booking page link. You can change the page URL later if needed. Then select who will be the booking page owner and editors. The owner of the booking page is the user receiving the bookings made on that page. By default, you are the owner of the booking pages you create. We will discuss what it means to be an owner or an editor of a booking page in our video titled Inviting Users to Join Your Schedule Once Account. Next, define which event types will be offered on your booking page. Finally, upload an image or icon for your booking page. Your customers will see this image when they visit your page. For a personal approach, you can add your headshot or add an icon to represent your page. When you click Save and Edit, you will land on the Overview section of the booking page. This section gives you a summary of your booking page's main properties. Here you can also edit the booking page's owner, editors, time zone, category, and theme. On the left, you have quick access to share and publish options for the page. We will go into more details on this in our video called Share and Publish in a Nutshell. In the next section, you can edit which event types are associated with your booking page. Simply select the event types you want to offer and press Save. You do not need to associate any event types with your booking page, but associating at least one enables greater flexibility in modeling your scheduling scenario. Now move on to the Associated Calendar section. If you have connected your calendar, you will see your calendar listed, as well as any sub-calendars or calendars others have shared with you. The main booking calendar is where bookings will be created and from where busy time is retrieved. This should be your personal calendar that you use for planning your time. You can also select any number of other calendars from which busy time is retrieved. Any busy time in these calendars automatically blocks availability in your booking page. You can also add the calendar event to any additional calendars without retrieving busy time. Press Save. And now let's move on to configuring your availability. Depending on your needs, you can set up recurring availability, date-specific availability, or both. Recurring availability allows you to define availability that repeats every week. You should use this if your availability is consistent from week to week. Alternatively, you can define your availability per each calendar date using date-specific availability. This is useful if you use scheduling for specific events or if your availability is highly variable. You can also use a combination of both types of availability to set a weekly pattern and create date-specific exceptions to the pattern. Date-specific availability always overrides recurring and can be used to reduce or increase availability on a specific day. For example, you may go on vacation and use date-specific availability to block out your vacation days. When you return from vacation, you can use date-specific availability to add extra availability to make up for it. On the date-specific availability section, you may see blue boxes on the calendar grid. These are events in your connected calendar that are blocking out busy times. Make sure to save your changes in both availability sections. And now let's move on to the location settings. Here you can determine if you want to set a virtual or physical meeting location. If you use a virtual location, you can choose to provide conferencing information to your customers. When you use ScheduleOnce's native GoToMeeting or WebEx integrations, ScheduleOnce will automatically create new web conferencing sessions for your meetings. If you are conducting face-to-face -face meetings, you can provide an address for your meeting location or ask your customers to provide the location. Save your location settings, and let's move on to the User Notification section. Here you can define the notifications the user will receive when a customer makes a booking. The table lists the different notification scenarios throughout the booking lifecycle. You can opt to send notifications by email and SMS. If you choose to send SMS notifications, be sure to check that you have SMS credits available. You can customize the notifications sent to users by using our Notification Templates Editor. To learn more about customizing notifications, watch our video on the Notification Templates Editor. Press Save and let's move on to the next section. The Public Content section is where you define the information that is available to your customers when they visit your booking page. You can add an image or icon, name, title, welcome message, contact information, and links to your social media profiles. This content will help your customers get to know you and your organization 
and give them more information about the meeting they are scheduling. Now your booking page is ready to go. Additional settings such as the scheduling options, the time slot settings, the cancel reschedule policy, the booking form, and customer notifications have already been configured with your event types. Now let's move on to the next video.